share a couple examples of pieces of equipment that I've built to demonstrate Newton's second law and Newton's third law. The first one I'd like to show you is actually uh, two carts. They're fairly simple. They're just plastic wheels nailed into the side of two by fours. And this one has a spring loaded into it, and that's going to apply our force for us. And Newton's third law is telling us, telling us that both these carts will receive the main, same amount of force. So if that's true, then since they weigh the same, we would expect the carts to move away at equal speeds. What about if we change the mass of this cart? Uh, I have another block that's the same size, and you can see there are these little dowels all coming out the sides here, and we can use that to attach the block with rubber bands. So now we've doubled the mass, same amount of force, what would be the expectation of, of when I release these blocks? We can continue the experiment by making this side even more massive. We can put three blocks on, use rubber bands to hold this in place, and then try it again and see if this even slows down more according to Newton's second law. So let's try it. So we see Newton's third law being applied to these blocks. We push them together, there's a spring inside that pushes them apart, and we see them accelerate away from each other uh, depending on their masses. Uh, more mass means a slower acceleration, and that's pretty much what Newton's second law is telling us. Uh, this is a pushing force. How about a pulling force? So we're going to try it again, this time with crashing blocks. Uh, once again, they're two by fours, and I have a recessed hole and eyelets in here that I've attached rubber bands to. And so the rubber band's actually going to pull the blocks together. Now, there aren't any wheels on this, but it's essentially the same experiment. Ready? Mm -hmm. So if we stretch these blocks at a certain distance, they should accelerate towards each other and meet right in the center of that, of that distance. Uh, if we increase the mass, we take and we rubber band a second block onto this one, stretch it, try it again, see if they indeed do the same thing once again. Will they still meet in the center where they should be, or will we see this one move slightly shorter distance because it is an increased mass? Uh, we can then try by adding a third block onto it and a fourth block onto it. Let's take a look and see what that looks like. Now it's time to try with something a little bit larger. Uh, in my class I have these two large platforms which people can actually stand on or you could just do it with skateboards. But let's try the same experiment on a larger scale. Okay, like this. Let me push. All right, you push. Don't have to push. <laughs> now I'm going to try it with two people and one person. Try that and see if they move away from each other at the same rate. And then we're going to try it with three people. Push. Push. Three bars, by the way. Is that going to fall? No. Push. <laughs> let's try it one last time. Instead of pushing, this time we're going to pull. This time, instead of equal weights, let's double the mass. We'll have a second person stand on there. One. Slowly. <laughs> let's try one last time. This time we're going to have three people on one side and one person on the other side. So these are a couple examples that I found helpful for students to understand Newton's second law and Newton's third law. Uh, they can predict what's going to happen, and that gives them a little bit clearer in insight into what's going on. I hope you found them useful. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.